Hello, sorry, there was a little bit of um, a stop start there. Hello, welcome to my spare bedroom again. Um, Friday at one o'clock, we made it. Um, thank you for being here if you're here live with me. I've managed to get comments live as well, so I'm working hard on that. Um, so apologies, what have I got to apologise for this week? Um, mainly in my hair, this is often a thing. So unfortunately I have the kind of hair that um, is better the second day. So I've got quite a busy day on camera today. So I've got, I thought I'd get this, enjoy this little moment chatting to myself on the, on the live on YouTube. I'm then gonna do the same to my coaching club for my nutrition clients. And then I'm gonna do um, my meso treatment um, via a Zoom. So I've got back to back stuff. So I thought I'd wash my hair for the first two, hence you have washed hair. And then the third one is I'm doing a facial. So no makeup, but then I don't wear a lot of makeup anyway, but. Anyway, so then no makeup, um, which made me smile because my clients always say that to me whenever I see them, you know, they apologise about their hair. It's like, oh, well, I, I was coming to see you, so I didn't think I'd bother. So things I have to put up with. But anyway, so thank you for um, being here. If you're listening to um, me live or you listen to me later, that is fantastic. I'm trying to get some structure going, so I've got myself some notes just to keep on track for this live i'm trying to kind of stick to about 30 minutes so let's see what we'll what we can um what we can do so thanks for being here if you are here i'm going to go a bit salesy if you like what you're hearing please make a comment ask me a question as i say i've got direct access to the live questions now so i can respond straight away give us a thumbs up give us a hello let me know that you're there and i'll give you a shout out that'd be great I'm going to go cover off four things today. The first thing I'm going to do is home high food treatments. This one keeps coming up, so I've got another uh, quick, quick answer and question on that one. I promised you last week that I would show you my home kit because it's getting very popular in this lockdown, these home kits. Um, I don't, again, I don't want to sound too salesy. There's lots of other people doing that out there. I want to advise you and help you make the choices. But what I will do is I'll show you what I'm using and what I'm using with my clients and that can help you make those choices. The third thing is one of the questions was about um, skin health tips. There is a video on this. So if you can't be bothered to listen to the next 30 minutes of me chatting, there should be a link on the card that come off the uh, across the top. Um, so I will probably cover those off again, but I'm going to add an added bonus at the end talking about nutrition for skin advice. Um, I was on a professionals or a, a therapy uh, webinar the other day with some other therapists that were all kind of getting together, which is great fun. And um, there was quite a few questions amongst the therapists about skin conditions. And there was a couple of things that I was kind of piping up about. So I thought I would share those with you guys. So that's great. Thank you to the one person that is watching me live. I really appreciate that. Welcome. Give us a thumbs up if you can. That'd be fantastic. So more about home treatments. Well, Marie was the lady that asked me and she asked me, do I think it's good to buy home HIFU or is it better to just go to clinic and get it done professionally? Well, that did make me smile because I, and I think I did answer her in my usual brutal honest, well, clearly I'm going to say get it done professionally. And again, in true form with this reason I wanted to do these live chats was to be able to give an explanation of that and add a bit more of a backstory so that Marie could make her own decision and her own choices to move forward because we don't know how long we are in lockdown for. Some clinics are open um, because they've got the medical licenses. Personally, I'm not open. I could be via my nutritional protocol, but it just feels like the right thing to do to be closed during lockdown. So the options for Marie to come and have a uh, um, professional haifu are quite limited at the moment. So there are some alternatives just to chat through. I will go back to that because another lady piped up. Um, I think it was the lady, I'm not sure, Ali, Ali Abad. She asked me where I was located after watching one of my haifu videos. Haifu, um, high intensity focused ultrasound for those that that terminology is not familiar. Um, I'm loc my clinic is in Leamington Spa in Warwickshire for those that want to know that. So going back to the would I recommend only going to clinic well it's a tricky one because as i, I think i have said this and, and will continue to say it high foo has been picked up on the market as a common terminology 
that covers i think a lot of other areas and the problem is a true high food treatment i don't believe can be administered by a handheld device that you brought from amazon now the theory is there is in a depth or an energy wave that can go deep enough into the skin that can cause a trauma how much energy and is it at the right level to penetrate the skin to cause the trauma is my question because my big fancy machine that i've got in my clinic that sits so i call him george um mainly because i think everyone should have a george in their life um work in theory on the old days of um the george clooney's and things like that in the world so i call my george because he's quite big and the energy that comes from him and the costs and the services and everything else there is no way i don't believe technology is that fantastic that that can be the same as having a little handheld device done at home and there's a great guy on youtube at the moment that's like drawing on his face and he's doing these treatments with this handheld machine that i found yeah great fair play to him he, he has got a change he's got a change of skin tone brilliant you stick any element of energy on your skin you give your skin any attention um it will improve hence things like microcurrent um casey type treatments these are very in the skin and they cause an instant <laughs> an instant contraction beautiful lovely treatment do that yourself at home nice plump skin by the afternoon wonderful you know carry on all day long for a 70 or 100 quid handheld machine perfect to compare that to the level of trauma that can be caused from a professional treatment with a, a high foo or even to compare it to an all therapy which is another gear above no um you're not going to get the same return so it's it's again what i'm trying to do is, is give you the facts so you can make a choice would i buy a handheld machine whilst i'm working from home rather than using my high food machine no i wouldn't i wouldn't waste the money um because i know i will be back in clinic soon and we'll be able to do that treatment for my clients who regularly have these treatments you know again we're working with microneedling which i'm going to come on to for regular collagen stimulation and regular maintenance of their skin tone I'm not worried that their skin's going to drop in the next three months because I'm not putting my high food treatment on them. I know that their skin will maintain its laxity. Common average age of my clients between sort of 40s and 50s. So I'm confident that their skin's not going to drop off a cliff in the next three to four months so that we've got time to use the high food on them as soon as I open clinic. Absolutely. Would I encourage them to do home skin needling? Absolutely. Would I encourage them to buy a handheld high food machine? Yeah, not so much hope that helps I do hope that helps so the common question then is that I'm getting and I don't I haven't got an actual lady that's asked me this this was I think in the chat that I was on but anyway the common thing is then is how often so I can only give you the guidelines I would give I would do based on my clinic based high food machine but I have had a look around in the past couple of weeks and I've looked at these handhelds so the reality is it's based on the depth that you're claiming to treat. So if this little handheld or if my high food machine is looking to lift the skin, so think lift heavy lifting of skin, then the depth of that, and I've seen this in these other YouTube videos, as I say, they're talking four mil and three mil. So if you're intending to stimulate a collagen or an inflammatory trauma at that depth of your skin, then you need to give that time to happen because it's deep in your skin. It's in what's called the SMAS layer. If that is what you're looking to achieve, do not treat that depth any more than once every 12 to 16 weeks. So every quarter, right? In typical bad luck, I would say, the people that need it the most need to do it the least. So if you have quite lax skin, let's say, um, and when I'm saying lax, I'm not you looking in the mirror going, I think my skin is lax. I'm talking 50 to 60 plus year old skin that's never really been treated. This skin will take 16 weeks to potentially achieve the same result as a more toned skin that has been treated over the years, only 12 weeks. 
So if you need it more, you have to sort of do the treatment less, okay? The reason, it takes longer for the collagen to be created, yeah? Because you haven't been poking it <laughs> all the time for previous treatments. It's a shock, it's a shock to the system, so that it's gonna be sluggish. So it's gonna need time to come round. The gains will be equal, but it just takes time for lax skin to get that buoyancy. So deep, high foo, high intensity focused ultrasound treatments, whether handheld or in clinic, I would only treat every three to four months. Okay, putting that in lump terms. Now, if your handheld machine has piggybacked off the back of this high food terminology, and it's actually a nano soft, uh, sorry, not nano soft, that's a different thing. It's actually a, an, um, a, tri, a, a monopolar or a nanopolar radio frequency handheld device, right? This type of treatment is only going to hit between one mil and two mil depth on your skin. It's just going to hit that sort of uh, sort of bottom end epidermis, top end dermal layer. That's all it's going to do. And it's quite active in there. And this is where we hit with microneedling. This is the spot that we're looking to hit. So if this handheld device, where's the best way? If it doesn't hurt, if it doesn't hurt, I suppose is another good way to look at it. But if you if you can feel a heat and you're generating a heat or you're putting it into your skin and you can't really feel it, you're like, yeah, okay, whatever, right? This is what I would say you could do every four to six weeks, working on the same theory of more lax skin. So if you've got young looking skin, so say you're in your sort of 30s, early 40s, and you've regularly been looking after your skin and you're really into all of this, you could do this kind of treatment every four weeks on the nose, do, 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 consistently, right? and you will improve your skin tone and you'll keep it where it is, right? If you're new to it and you're thinking, oh, I could do with a bit of a lift, da, 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 then this is when you need to be leaving it six weeks. The reason is, is, is that if you're, I was, I've got a bit of an umpa lumpa problem. I've got these things in my head. I've got these little workers in my head kind of running around trying to kind of solve these problems. So if these guys have been a bit, a bit like us with um, COVID, it's all a bit slow, yeah? We're working, but we're all a little bit kind of like, oh, I best have lunch. <laughs> Just do me workout. Let's go for a walk. I know a lot of you are very, very busy, but I'm just using this as an example. Then it's the same with the little, little umpa lumpers in sort of lax skin. They're a little bit slow. They're, they're there, but you know, they might need a little bit of encouragement. The thing is, is they're not going to come out the blocks all organs blazing and start producing fantastic um, collagen reproduction. Okay, so because to synthesize collagen, it's quite a lot of work. So the more you need this, the more time you've got to give these little lumpa lumpers to get going. It's just going to take a lot longer to get these peptides, that the collagen um, that's required to get going. So the laxer your skin, the, the longer you need to leave between treatments. The firmer your skin or the younger you are or the better your skin quality, you can do this on the bounce every four weeks. And four weeks is because that's how long it takes to produce the collagen. Smashing it out every week isn't gonna give you more collagen. It's actually gonna have a negative effect. Because again, thinking of the umpa lumpers, just as they're getting out to go to work, just as they're getting together all the ingredients that they need to produce the collagen, you're smacking them again. And then down, down they go. So then they've got to go all the way back to the beginning, part of the inflammatory process, deal with the heat. You've got to then produce all the cytokines. You've got to go all the way back to the beginning again. And then just as they get to sort of week one or to the end of week two, they're getting close to producing this collagen, bang, you smack them again with a load more energy, yeah? It's a bit weird, I know, but that's how I think about it and try and explain it to my clients. It's let them, let them do that, traumatize them, give them the ingredients, and let them do their job. Let that skin build back up again. And I'm also talking from personal experience, or professional experience. I've been using radio frequency um, way before I got into high food treatments. And we were originally told the protocol of, you know, weekly, bang, 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 do them weekly for six to eight weeks, and this will give them um, firming and toning, especially on the body. But what I found was, A, it was really tricky for clients to actually come every week for six to eight weeks. Yeah, and you'd be surprised, but life gets in the way. So what I found was we were actually in reality doing it every two weeks, about, you know, every sort of two to three weeks. 
And what we were finding with the body treatments was that the longer we left it between treatments, the better the result was. So I actually experienced this myself a good five or six years ago. So this is where this comes from. Nowadays, the skin protocols are the same with cotton on. So I talk from experiencing myself, not just from a manual. So to recap, on skin heat, radio frequency, nano, mono, radio, you'll see RF, those sorts of things. Even if it says HIFU and you're only going between one and two mil deep on your skin, do that treatment every four to six weeks. And I mean, do it every four to six weeks, not just do it once and hope that everything's going to be wonderful. I mean, consistently. And if you're going to get bored, do it consistently for three months and then rest and then come back to it. Don't just do one, then six months later, do another one and hope that it's working. Right. You've got to consistently do it. If your high food little handheld device is talking four mils and three mils and it's got a bit of a twang to it as you do the treatment, this treatment must be done between four, sorry, three and four months apart. Now, whilst you're doing this three to four months apart treatment, in between that, you can do this on skin, this radio frequency in between, okay? Because they don't it's sort of interrupt because you're working deeper down and then you're coming from the top with the radio frequency. So one week you could do your deep, then the following month you could do um, more on skin. So like this radio frequency, this sort of two mil depth um, energy, the same the next month. And then the third month you can go back to deep again, okay? so. I hope that makes sense, but that's what I do in clinic with clients. So that's what you could do at home with your handheld devices as well. So that's HIFU and radio frequency all thrown in together. So I hope that's answered um, Marie's questions about, um, about HIFU um, and various of the ones that I keep getting about, radio, um, about HIFU and radio frequency. But ask away because it is, it is complicated. And they say, I've been working with this stuff now for about six six or plus years so um it, it it seems normal to me but obviously it's quite new to the market for you guys so if it doesn't make sense please do ask i'm more than happy to explain probably without umpa lumpers it might be better <laughs> not official but anyway so there was another question oh i got a lovely um set of questions which was my next um go to talking about um the five tips so in between that i'm going to talk about micro needling stamps and serums because I touched on it last week and um, about um, the quality of a serum that you should use when you're doing your micro needling and I was talking about not your everyday serum so if you've got a targeted serum you know your retinol your vitamin c um, some any collagen some peptides anything like that that you're using on your skin, like even the multi type serum, targeted serums that have got niacinamide in or, oh, my mind's gone blank. But anyway, any type of targeted serum, I'm hearing a lot of the people are using these serums and then using them to needle. And what I was trying to get across was, it's not don't, as in it's the worst thing you can do, but I didn't want people to believe that needling in your targeted serum will it enhance the efficacy of that serum. It is not the case. There are mesotherapy type serums. The active ingredients is a different molecule size. So when impregnated into the skin, mesotherapy, then these serums are far more active and do add value when put under the skin compared to on the skin. So I promised you that I would show you the one that I use. But when you're looking for mesotherapy type serums, you're looking for them to be, and I'm not very good at this whole to camera thing, but you're looking for something in a vial, right? Now this is the one, this is the company I personally use. It's Filmed, you've heard me speak about it before. If you see through the channel, you see me talk about the home care and everything else and take a look at my, um, my needling video. But this stuff, NCTF, it's a multivitamin, basically. It's peptides, it's um, stem cells, it's, it's everything that you would need to be going under the skin. Um, ideally for skin rejuvenation. So this is what I micro needle in, but I also use as mesotherapy. Now, the great thing about micro needling and these kind of serums, whatever your skin concern is, list them out, right? Pigmentation, fine lines and wrinkles, um, open pores, uh, lack of tone. Uh, I can't think of them all now, but everything that we all moan about, this treatment 
and these type of serums solve all of those problems because don't forget these issues these these are symptoms of something right so instead of trying to treat fine lines and wrinkles um, treat pigmentation uh, treat uh, what my asthma thinking um, acne is or some sort of rosacea is think about where it's come from and if you can solve those problems yeah you, you, you sort of you can deal with the conditions because all skin conditions are are clues that something is going wrong inside so there's just a, your body's way of giving you a clue that something's not right so by doing the micro needling and using these kind of multivitamin that's the best way i can explain them type high quality active ingredient serums that are designed to go under the skin and be placed at that trauma site next to the trauma to feed the cytokines the ingredients that they want to regenerate their skin cell strong skin cell regeneration and then grow through the skin firmer stronger brilliant more communicative skin on the top layer right so this is why i'm obsessed with micro skin needling and these kind of little serums they're harder to get hold of they're more expensive than your everyday serum so if this isn't a rabbit hole that you want to go down that's absolutely fine but people are asking me what it is that i micro needle with or i put into my skin and it's these kind of nasotherapy serums that you're looking for they're airtight and they need to be pulled out by a syringe okay because they're so active they're not just sitting on the shelf down at boots and you just purchase them there's no shelf life to them yeah there's other packs that you might find you may um maybe able to get your hands on some things like hyaluronic acid they come in these strange packs um, this is for people that are able to needle these things into your skin but these will also go onto your skin and a great glide if you're using a, a pen a glide um, so you need more of um, yeah as i say a glide on your skin and hyaluronic acid is good for that and i've also got another little hyaluronic acid here that i use for the neck because our necks tend to lack um the hyaluronic acid more than our faces which is why our necks can look very different to our, our skin our faces on the skin and my stamp that i like to use uh, is this simple as that i do have pens as well i use a, um, a dp8 pen but i've been using these i don't like clients using pens because they're you know, the oscillating speed can be pretty horrific and they can go to two mil depth. I mean, that's just too scary beyond words. So these are these little stamps that I've been using. Um, they just come in these little boxes like so. Um, and the great thing about these is that you can clean them, you can reuse them. And they are 0.8 mil depth. And you just kind of do like that with the serum, work all around the skin under supervision, never leave you on your own to do this. This is a great introduction or a great, great way to do microneedling at home if you're unsure, because I'm hearing that a lot. I'm hearing a lot of questions about people are a bit unsure about this microneedling and the fear of, you know, coming at themselves with these pens. Absolutely. You know, it's a professional grade treatment. You know, it, it's quite scary that there's people at home with these pens doing these treatments, especially, as you know, I'm not a fan of creating that much trauma and blood. There is no blood. Is, uh, blood is not required um, during micro skin needling to get a good result. Another question I commonly get asked, how often would I micro skin needle? Exactly the same as the on skin hyphae. You're looking to cause a collagen within the top sort of top her layer of the skin. So I wouldn't micro needle any more than four times, sorry, any more than monthly. So four weeks when you've got good skin initially when i start out with skin to get it to a good place i would shallow needle <laughs> it's getting complicated now isn't it basically i start a skin protocol of every two weeks for two or three goes and then move them on to monthly so the answer is how many times or how often would i micro skin needle every four weeks and again it goes to consistently every four weeks not smash out a couple here and there well you know do one and then six months later, oh, 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 I'll do that needling thing again. Oh, that was really good. Yeah, yeah, I quite like that. No, no, no. It's a skin gym, right? That's why I do a skin gym. Your skin likes this consistency, slow and low. I often relate it to like, you know, you don't get, you pay for your gym membership, never go, rock up, do a spin class, get home, kill yourself, can't walk for three days, don't go again for six months. What a complete waste of time. It's exactly the same with doing your skin. 
what is the point doing one massive treatment, smashing everything up and then not touching it again for months or weeks on end? Yeah, all you're doing is causing a load of trauma. But if you rock up and you go, you know, a little bit every day to the gym and you do a little bit of cardiovascular work and then you have a, like a personal training session, have some weights and then maybe perhaps go into the strength class and then maybe do a bit of a spin class, then you're starting to get some gains, right? It's the same with your skin. Microneedling, then a couple of weeks later or four weeks later, you could do some um, hi um, high food, like we're talking about radio frequency. You know, you can interlink these treatments and create your own skin protocol. But don't chuck everything at it all at once and hope that it's all gonna, you know, all gonna work straight away. I've just looked down. Here's my Jill, here's my Lynn Gill. This is the lady that was asking me, um, had a, asked me a fantastic question about masks. I'm still working on it, Lynn. I've, <laughs> I've been talking, uh, having a good look at um, the benefits of masks over and above obviously the obvious thing of putting a mask on. But I wanted to give you a more structured question, um, answer to that question. So I will come on to that. So yeah, anyway, that's my micro needling little kit that I do. And then the idea is, is that once every four weeks together, we get together and we zoom and you do micro needling um, and do um, supervision, which is what's important to me. So thanks, Lynn, for your little thumbs up. Appreciate that. Now I've ran over because now I'm going to want to talk about nutrition. And I want to talk about the, it's about gut. So on this call I did the other day, when I was hanging out with some of the therapists, we were talking about conditions of skin and you know how we treat certain things and the various protocols that we all have. And one of the things that's kept coming up was I'm screaming at the screen going, it's their gut, it's their gut. So it follows on from um, talking about dry skin last, uh, last week. And the reasons we tend to have dry skin is it's all to do with the lack of absorption from, the, from our gut and then, I mean, I'm going, I'm opening the can of worms here, but one of the key factors, let's put it that way, could be the quality of the gut flora and the ability to absorb the nutrients, for example, lipid-based vitamins, vitamin D, E, A, and K, which can influence our skin cell membrane and our lipoproteins within our skin cells to allow the quality of that skin cell to come to the surface and naturally die away and rather than coming to the surface and that skin, skin cell integrity being broken as it comes to the surface. Skin cell integrity being broken, things like psoriasis, excessive dry skin um, and eczema. Okay, So this is a topic of conversation because a client weirdly then got in touch and was asking me about dead skin on her body. So dead skin on the body, I was sort of encouraging a body brush because quite often with the body, we don't obviously exfoliate as much as we do the face. So the general skincare protocol is very similar, you know, with the dry skin. You'll hear me talk excessively about exfoliation first. Make sure the pH of your skin is at optimal. So either sort of drop it down with these liquid exfoliators that I, exfoliators that I spoke to you about and then concentrate on adding in the nutrients that the skin may be short of. So hyaluronic acid being the main one, and then things like the vitamins in targeted serums to increase the hydration from the top. And then you put your cream on top. So don't rely on a cream to solve dry skin. Yeah, you need to go two, two or three steps back to exfoliate the skin, get it to a good pH, add in the good stuff, and then put your creams on top to protect. <laughs> you could also then add a mask on top. <laughs> Thinking about that extra hydration okay so that that was the the protocol that we would regularly give to someone that's got dry skin okay so from a gut point of view the gut is where can influence the makings of the cell before it gets to this level so before you look at exfoliating this dead skin this skin cell has been influenced by, by what you ate potentially three or four weeks ago so when we're looking at the gut or when you're looking at ex, um, skin so if I see someone that's got flaky skin, for example, I'll do this at the other angle, it's probably better to explain. If someone came to clinic and they've got dry flaky skin here between their, their, their eyebrows, okay, I would instantly look at that client and think, right, there's a potential here for a dairy or gluten intolerance. The skin gives us clues, it's talking to us, it's telling you that there's a problem. 
when we look at gut problems and you talk about food intolerances or food allergies, our brains tend to very much go towards anaphylactic type um, allergies, like big shots, you know, peanut allergies, and, and people being excessively um, allergic to something, right? You can be intolerant to something and have absolutely no idea that you're intolerant to it, okay? So the amount of times I've chatted to a client, I said, oh, you know, a little bit of dry patch there on your forehead. You know, have you had that long? Oh, I've always had that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, so do you eat a lot of dairy? Oh, no, no, not much. No, no, cup of tea, maybe, maybe cappuccino every now and then. You know, innocently, they don't think that they they have a lot of dairy. So there's not an, associ uh, not an association to a dairy intolerance. The issues with intolerances and the gut is it's not about volume, okay? It's science. So it's about the fact that a molecule of that dairy is in the gut and there's an inflammatory response to it. Now, just because that particular client, for example, doesn't have gut problems, so she didn't bloat when she had the dairy, she doesn't get diarrhea, she never, it doesn't mean that her immune system isn't being triggered when she consumes an element of dairy. Not all intolerances are related or, or shown through, should I say, as IBS or as bowel problems or, you know, chronic. Yes, there's lots of them. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. So IBS, IBD, you know, Crohn's disease, SIBO, all these things are mega, mega gut problems. But our skin can give us clues to things that perhaps haven't quite got to disease level yet. Yeah. So if you're suffering with dry skin, eczema, psoriasis, patches of dry skin, Personally, if you presented that to me, I would look at your gut. Now, when we say look at your gut, this is huge. You know, this is a whole full-time job looking at gut, let alone talking to you about skincare. So what I wanted to get across today for sort of food for thought, <laughs> I love that phrase, food for thought, is don't always hunt for a cream, right? Look internally a little bit. Look at yourself a little bit. Look at what else is happening. Take the clues to what your body's trying to say. If the doctor's giving you a cream for a skin rash and after three months it hasn't cleared up, the cream ain't ever going to solve that problem, right? Something else is going on. So all I really want to open up with this is think of your whys. Why is this happening? Why have I got dry skin? What is it that is contributing or feeding this dry skin problem? And instead of automatically thinking for a big thick cream to put on your skin, look internally. I'm going to say this, I'm a nutritional therapist, but look at what it is that you're eating. Now, the instant quick hit on this, because I can imagine someone screaming at the, maybe Lynn actually screaming at the screen, and, and, how can I solve this? So if you look at your gut, similar to our biggest organ, which is our skin, you, you know that your gut lining apparently stretched out is like as big as a football pitch or something ridiculous, right? So your gut is, is similar. It's a skin and it's massive, right? So treat the gut as you would your skin. Now, I'm not on about swallowing, a, you know, doing an exfoliating peel or anything, but the theory is the same, okay? So on our skin, to encourage the absorption of your targeted serums, I encourage you to drop the pH of your skin to exfoliate off the dead skin and to open up the skin cells to be able to absorb in the nutrients from your targeted serums. Right, hold that there. Gut. Every morning before you have breakfast, add a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar to a glass of water and drink it. Right? Then 20 minutes later, have your breakfast or have your lunch or have your dinner. Apple cider vinegar is the most natural way to drop the pH of your stomach lining to encourage the absorption of your nutrients from the next meal that's coming. So if you've got dry, I mean, I'm, the gap between that and that is quite far, so I'm really making this sort of headliney. If your skin is dry due to the lack of the absorption of the nutrients from the food that you're eating and you're taking a skin supplement, for example, or you're taking a collagen supplement, but you're still suffering with dry skin, it's the man in the middle that's the problem. You're not absorbing those nutrients that you're pushing in. So apple cider vinegar is the genius thing. It's naturally made. 
water it down, okay? And it's a bit like some of the things that I get my nutrition clients to do. It's not the nicest thing in the world, and I add. But if you have a little mouthful of apple cider vinegar with some water before breakfast or before, you, before a meal, then what it does is it drops the pH or the, the gut um, pH so that the food that, you, that comes in next likes it, it's happy, okay? And therefore, as that food comes in, the digestive enzymes to absorb the nutrients are happy. It's a happy place, very similar to the, our skin. The pH is at the right level. It's not too acidic, it's not too alkaline, it's happy. You can have a Google round. Apple cider vinegar gets this huge, great press about it's amazing, it's anti-inflammatory, it's antiviral, it's, it does everything. The great thing is it's not the apple cider vinegar that does it, right? It's the what the apple cider vinegar does to your body. That's what the benefits are. That's how my uh, brain has gone. When I go get loud at my room. Oh, thanks, Lynn. So Lynn says, oh, I'll put it on. Yeah, thank you. Good old Lynn, you're an absolute gem. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, so when she goes low carb, reduces the acidity of her diet and then adds in a lemon juice, which is increasing the, oddly it's acidic, but it balances the pH in the gut. The skin tells her very quickly that it's happy. So if you've got redness of skin, you know, some sort of rosacea, um, you know, flushing here, those sorts of things, this is a clue that there's a problem in your gut. Okay, whacking a load of cream on it's not going to solve the problem. Take two steps back. But this is what, this apple cider vinegar is kind of like, you know, the quick fix. This is, this is a big thing, you know, I, I talk about this all day, every day. But it's, look at your stomach acid is the first place in the same way I make you do exfoliation for your skin. Drop the pH of your gut, get that in a happy place, and then obviously it's all about the food that you put in and the quality and everything, blah, 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 blah. But, it's a nice quick hit that you can do that perhaps you could give a go, uh, give it a go after sort of listening to me today and see what you think, okay? Now, yes, if you've got quite a bad heartburn and those sorts of things, the thought of putting these foods um, in, in down your throat is like, oh my God, this woman's gone crazy, but dilute it, drop it right down to hardly anything, you know, or even just use balsamic vinegar on your salad but what I'm looking to do is is this vinegar element of it this apple cider vinegar will help to balance your gut flora um, the pH sorry in your gut and therefore your gut flora and it's a little thing that you could easily do that can only add value and then obviously I'll start to talk a lot more about how nutrition can influence your your um, dry skin but there's so much of this you know as I say pardon me, uh, dry skin's a big one there's other things that I think I've touched on before. Uh, skin tags, for example. So when people come to clinics with skin tags, they go and get the skin tag removed. If I see a skin tag, especially around here, this is pre-diabetes, okay? This, uh, it's, it's your body is trying to tell you something. You don't just get them cut off and move on. Um, oily skin. For me, if I see oily skin, um, especially if they're sort of close to menopause or menopausal, this is a liver clearance issue. This is an excessive amount of estrogens in the body. So you look to cleanse the liver. So, you know, there's clues in our skin that can give us an idea of where we can go and how we can improve our nutrition from the inside out, rather than always thinking that there's a cream or there's a problem from the outside down. So I just wanted to touch on that. So I hope that's hasn't been um, too complicated. And um, I love sharing stuff like that, as you know. My passion is nutrition and skin, so putting the two together just oh, absolutely lights me up. So it's absolutely fantastic. I've gone over a bit. Any questions um, later on, um, if you watch this, then please do pop them in the box and I'll be more than happy to answer them. I'm offering, whilst we're in lockdown, the opportunity to do um, completely complimentary skin health chats especially if there's a couple of things that i've said today that you that you're thinking oh yeah that that's me you know i could, oh, I could uh, who do i talk to about this then there'll be a link in the in the comments that you could book that in and we can have a um complimentary or you can have the complimentary zoom chat and i'll be able to see your skin and perhaps just give you just some guidelines really rather than getting in anything too deep um within a sort of a, just a consultation it would be lovely to see you. So if you want to book in and have a, a chat, that'd be great. I'm happy to do that whilst we're in this lockdown. It'd be great to uh, meet and see, see you all and see if I can help in any way by combining this skincare and our nutrition. 
to give you this stronger, firmer looking skin, especially as you know, my little obsession is for ladies over 40. That's who I love to help the most. So thank you for watching and especially to Lynn. Oh, I'm still working on the mask thing, by the way. <laughs> and um, yeah, have a lovely day and I'll see you all again same time next week. Many thanks.